Hi there, and welcome to Method of the Meanness. I'm Burley Mullins, and I'm filming this video in two parts, and I don't know which intro I'm going to use. <laughs> So today I'm starting the fermentation on the Valheim uh, mead of minor healing, minor healing mead. And so you can see right here, I already have the honey and most of the ingredients prepared here and the other ones prepared here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play the video of me preparing this now. Okay, so for this mead, I'm going to be doing a couple of uh, processes that I actually haven't done in a mead before. So that's very exciting. So first of these techniques that I haven't done with meat before, uh, with I'm gonna take these fruits, uh, put them in the fermenter overnight, and macerate them. Macerate them. In honey. Now this is often done in baking, and it's usually used with granulated sugar. Uh, but, uh, but I'm gonna give it a shot here. Normally what I do is cut open the fruits and have them steep in the mead, um, but this is for personal meads where I don't really need to know the alcohol percentage. It's more for fun. Uh, for a mead like this, where I'm going to want that information immediately, um, it's crucial that I actually extract the juices into the honey um, before I uh, mix it up and take the measurements. So the membranes on these fruits are uh, semi-permeable, and so they will allow the sugars and juices, uh, well, most of the sugars and the juices and waters of the fruit to be drawn out into the honey uh, due to the concentration of moisture and sugar um, being out of balance. Uh, this is basic diffusion, you know, chemistry and biology at work. Because I have, for the meads that I make, a relatively large amount of fruit um, I'm actually going to tone down the honey some, but I still want a fairly sweet mead. So I'm going to shoot for 2.6 pounds of honey. 2.5, 2.6. We'll see what I get out of these. Also, once I finish the uh, maceration process, um, I'm going to be shaking this mead into the water like I normally do, with as much vigor as I normally do. So hopefully that, you know, breaks apart some of the uh, fruits going to be siphoning around um, so that I, I do leave as much fruit solids behind in the primary fermentation as possible. Nobody wants a pulpy mead. I don't know, maybe. Put in the comments if you'd like a pulpy mead. If you ever looked at a smoothie and thought, hmm, I wish this were wine. Actually, there was a great episode on tasting history about a wine like this. Uh, and if I remember to, I'll link it up here in the corner. You know how it goes. Here. Oh, in case you're wondering what I do with the leftover honey in these containers, um, in a future video I'll show you um, making honey syrup for cocktails and mocktails. Uh, it will probably be a video of a cocktail or mocktail using honey syrup instead of honey. I'll go into more detail about why I do that, why you would want to use a honey syrup instead of just plain honey in this situation. Um, during that episode. Ended with 2.635 pounds of honey in there. I'm going to cover this up and let it macerate overnight. So as I may have already explained, I'm filming this a bit out of order. Uh, the minor healing mead in Valheim contains honey, um, raspberries, blueberries, seen here, and dandelions. This is what I've got in these little tea bags, these little sachets, is the dandelion flowers. Uh, just the yellow petals, you don't want much of the green bits, but they're bitter. What I have here is dandelion root, uh, which has sort of an earthy, a little chocolate, mildly, mildly bitter. Uh, if you've ever had a stout beer that wasn't very hot, uh, you'll be very familiar with the flavor in this. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to um, roast two and a half tablespoons of these uh, in a you know, skillet, uh, in a, um, yeah, a, a pan on the stove. 
uh, and then I'm going to put it in already boiling water while it is continually boiling, because to make proper dandelion tea uh, with dandelion root, it is not an infusion where you just boil the water, turn it off, and then steep like you would with tea. It is actually a decoction where you have it in the boiling water uh, while it's going uh, for about 15 minutes in that boiling water. Now at the end of it, these will go in as an infusion. So I've already started the roasting process on these um, before I hit record. Um, but as you can see, it's just a uh, thin layer on the bottom of a pan. And occasionally I'm going to toss. Uh, in this instance, I'm really going by smell. When it smells, a l just, just before it smells smoky, when it smells thoroughly roasted, you will get those chocolate notes, you'll get those dark, rich, uh, delicious notes um, off of this. It'll smell like a wonderful stout beer. There's also a bit of an earthy aroma to it, which I find pretty pleasant. Uh, it's similar to something that you might find in a lightly peated scotch. Uh, very pleasant to the nose. And that's this roasted. It's gonna go into the boiling water for 15 minutes. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that on video, just due to limitations of that I have here. And we're back. So you can see now that the fruit has been macerating uh, for 24 hours, and I have brewed up a dandelion tea with both the roots and the flowers, uh, the yellow parts, not the green parts. Um, I do believe I did explain that they were bitter. This part of the video is just going to be me combining the ingredients and getting a uh, starting gravity reading and brims reading. Oh, that smells great. This does in fact smell pretty earthy. Um, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of clay smell in this. Um, not unpleasantly so. Um, kind of like uh, when you freshly slice potatoes, it has sort of a tuberous smell to it. But also a bit of chocolate and like over caramelized sugar. So there's a little bit of bitterness in this, just from the smell. Uh, and I should think it, I think it should complement the flavors of these fruits pretty well. Uh, I know I'm going off of a recipe that uh, exists in the game, and I know I kind of called an audible with including dandelion roots along with the flowers, uh, but the asset in the game is just the whole flower, so. that big of a stretch. It's going to be pretty hard to tell when the honey is dissolved into this. Yeah, the honey really drew out the juices and uh, sugars from inside uh, these, these fruits. Well, I'm going to cut the sound out of this part anyways, because I'm going to be shaking the... Uh... So not only am I dissolving the honey with this process, but I hope that I'm bruising and weakening the skin of the fruits. I want there to be a lot of skin contact, uh, because that does give more color to the meats. I don't want it to just be this brown, although it will lighten, I'm adding water. Uh, but I do want to get those blues and those reds. And prolonged skin contact is actually the reason why red wine gets its color and why rosé doesn't have any color. Well, some forms of rosé are just red wine made without keeping the juice in contact with the skin. The more you know. You know, you do this enough, you get pretty buff. <laughs> Yeah, so the honey is no longer stuck to the bottom 
of the jug. That's, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the sped up footage, but that's why I kept tilting it to look at the bottom. The honey clings. I had it written down, but I forgot. I had it written down um, on my computer, but I forgot to add it to my notes here. But the yeast is Lalvin 71B, but I decided um, it can do both standard fermentation and uh, malic fermentation. Uh, I'm anticipating some acidity from the fruits, and I'm hoping that my yeast choice will allow some of that sharpness to be cut in the final product. We'll find out. I've already prepared it in this bowl, and I'm going to add water till the one gallon mark, which I have finally, at least on this one fermenter, put right there. So helpful. <laughs> That did not lighten it up nearly as much as I thought it would. I'm gonna give it another pretty vigorous shake to get more oxygen in there, and then I'll get the gravity reading. Now this should be a fairly accurate gravity reading, despite my adding fruits due to the maceration process. Most of the sugar from the fruits should be sugars and liquids in the fruits that the yeast is going to have access to should already be in, in suspension with the honey, or should I say in solution. I don't necessarily need them for the extra sugar, but I want them for flavoring. So that's an initial gravity reading of 1.101. Now all that's left is to put the lid, lid on it, get the airlock going, and wait. I'm not going to bother with any nutrient with this due to the amount of fruit in here. Uh, it should be able to get everything it needs off of that. That's another reason why I wanted the uh, fruit to bruise a little bit uh, during the shaking process. Just how you can't eat just nothing but sugar. Neither can yeast. <sighs> this is part one of the Valheim Minor Healing Need. Um, please remember to like Subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. That is the best way you can support the channel right now outside of sharing it to your friends who are interested in mead or interested in any of the properties that I'm covering in uh, these episodes. I'm Burley Mullins, and this has been Method of the Meadness. See you next time. Decided to interrupt uh, my episode again. It's your hobby now.